when your final action is best described as attacked by every weapon in the American arsenal, you know a ship had a rough time. Such was the fate of the Japanese cruiser Mogami, an already unlucky ship. That the cruiser ended up on the bottom in more or less one piece is actually impressive. Mogami's wreck wasn't surveyed in great detail, but the pictures show a ship that is surprisingly intact. I've also covered her before in the overall Leyte wreck video. In this video, I will cover her wreck in more detail. Before we get to that, however, I'll briefly summarize her final action. Mogami sailed as part of Japan's southern force for the Battle of Leyte Gulf. That was on October 24th, 1944. This saw her join the Fuso-class battleships and a handful of destroyers in charging up Surigao Strait right into the arms of Jesse Ollendorf's battle group, formed around six standard-type battleships, along with multiple cruisers, a group of destroyers, and a group of PT boats. While the battleships and destroyers came out far worse in this engagement, Mogami was not able to escape damage of her own. Destroyer guns peppered her in the night, along with shells from the cruisers. USS Portland, in particular, landed a few hits with her 8-inch guns. This wrecked Mogami's bridge, killed her captain, and left her limping along under the command of her chief gunnery officer. Limited to just one engine room and shaft by this point, the cruiser turned around and attempted to withdraw. Steering by hand and limited to 8 knots, Mogami was barely able to limp along. It should come as little surprise, really, that she was unable to dodge when the cruiser Nachi loomed out of the darkness. Nachi ran Mogami, threw no fault on Mogami's end, and did more damage to the battered cruiser. Although, even with that damage, Mogami's crew managed to get her back up to 14 knots. This heroic effort to save their ship would, in the end, be in vain. Fires had continued to rage from her earlier battle damage, and these would eventually reach her torpedo tubes. Four of Mogami's torpedoes blew up as a result. It didn't finish the cruiser off, but it certainly didn't help matters either. She continued to sail to the illusion of safety, hounded by PT boats and American cruisers. The cruisers hit her again, setting new fires, but Mogami continued to limp along. That she escaped all of these attacks is something to be respected. Alas, she could not escape air attack. When the sun rose on October 25th, 1944, the cruiser was hit by bombs from American aircraft. Three Avengers hit her with 500-pound bombs, finally putting her machinery plant out of action. With fires raging out of control and no chance of restarting her engines, Mogami was abandoned around 11 a.m. on the 25th of October. A single torpedo from the destroyer Akabono put her out of her misery, sending Mogami to the bottom, where she would remain undisturbed for decades, until RV Petrol performed one of their surveys of Pacific shipwrecks. In the case of Mogami, she was one of the last discoveries by Petrol and her intrepid team. The wreck was located on May 8, 2019, at a depth of 1,450 meters, or 4,760 feet, quite a bit deeper than her Surigao consorts, but still relatively shallow for a Pacific War wreck. Regardless, at her depth, Mogami has avoided salvage or much in the way of marine growth. The wreck is fairly recognizable and in one piece, which is about the best that can be said for her. Let's begin looking at the Hulk with the sonar image. This image already shows some of the damage done to the wreck. Her deck is a mess of debris, with very little in the way of recognizable structures. This is partially because Mogami was converted to an aviation cruiser after the Battle of Midway. Her aft pair of turrets were removed, and a seaplane carrying deck put in their place. That deck has largely been burnt or rotted away. As a result, everything past her funnels is just gone on this image. All that remains is the shape of her hull. The second sonar image is little better in that regard 
although it does show her bow turrets. I'll put an arrow to those here. That said, there's not much more to look at. So, with that in mind, let's move on to the wreck pictures. Starting with the weaponry, and then looking at the hull, as is tradition with these videos. In the case of the weaponry, there is relatively little to look at. First, we have the foremost turret. This is interesting, and distinct from other Japanese wrecks, because of the bow. A fairly substantial chunk of that was torn away, and folded over the top of turret 1. Exactly how this happened is a bit of a mystery. It might be from the damage Nachi did in the collision, or it might just have been accumulated damage from the fire the ship took. Regardless, it's certainly a different look compared to other wrecks. It's not unique for those who watched my Astoria video, but it's certainly special. Here, on Mogami, the barrels of the turret are poking out from beneath the bow debris. That debris, in turn, is intact enough that you can see anchor chain on it. I put another arrow here, so you can identify the chain. There's also ruined hull at the base of the turret, but the darkness makes it difficult to make that out. As for the next image, this one is just as interesting. This is technically hull, not weaponry, but it's a closer look at the debris on turret 1. Other than the whole folded back over a turret thing, this is actually quite intact. The anchor chain is still in place, and the deck hasn't fallen apart. If this wasn't on top of the turret, well, you'd think the bow was fine. Moving on to turret 2, then, we only have one picture. This is a side shot, which shows a largely intact turret. It's rusted out and covered in silt, but there's no immediately obvious battle damage. Unfortunately, there's also no good view of the guns themselves, although there might be more anchor chain on top of the turret. It's hard to make out and say for sure. Turret 3, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. Here, petrol focus on the guns and not the turret itself. As a result, we have an excellent look at the barrels, pointing up at different angles. This turret was knocked out by the American cruisers, so that might be a result of battle damage. That said, we can't see the turret itself, so the damage is invisible here. As for the barrels, they're broadly intact, but rusted and covered in coral. Pretty standard for one of these wrecks. That wraps up the main battery, so let's look at the remaining weaponry. In Mogami's case, that means a single secondary mount, a single anti-aircraft gun, and two sets of torpedo tubes. First, the secondary mount. The weaponry itself is basically intact. Bits and pieces have fallen away, but it's completely recognizable as a Japanese 127mm 5-inch gun mount. I'll put a picture of Mogami on the surface to compare against here. What's interesting about this particular mount is the battle damage to the gun tub. This is clear in the lower corner. It's too small to be from 8-inch shells, which means this is likely from the destroyers or aircraft. A second look at the guns from further out is about the usual on a Pacific War wreck. Two barrels pointing up to the surface, with coral and other marine growth lining them. Nothing particularly special here, but still worth looking at, especially on a Japanese shipwreck. The next picture, by contrast, is much more interesting. Not really for the 25mm gun, which is so heavily rusted it's barely recognizable. No, this picture is interesting because of the hull visible behind it. This is on Mogami's stern, where her seaplane deck was once located. It's caved in and barely visible in the darkness, leading to the 25mm gun being canted at an angle. None of the wooden deck is left, and the metal is hard to make out. It seems that some of it has rusted away, or was burnt away in the battle. I'll put another arrow to what I mean, but it's really hard to say for sure. The only other interesting bit in this image is more anchor chain resting next to the gun. So, with that done, that just leaves the torpedo tubes. Petrol only photographed the port side tubes, 
and both sets are intact. That means, by process of elimination, that it was the starboard tubes that exploded. Unfortunately, again, we don't have pictures of those to look at and compare. As for the port side tubes, this first picture shows the forward set. The floating silt and lack of light makes it hard to say much about them other than they're still there. The hole around them, for its part, is pretty pristine considering the situation. There's even recognizable portholes beneath the torpedoes. The second set of tubes, for their part, were photographed in more detail. The first picture is from closer in. Much closer in, as Petrol brought their ROV almost to the point of bumping against Mogami's hull. Here you can actually faintly see the torpedo tubes. There's no visible damage, and certainly no sign of an explosion. As for the hull, this is a real color shot with less of the blue tint. The rusting and silt is more visible here, as are the portholes. That won't interest some viewers, however, so I'll swap to the next picture. This is the final weaponry shot, and a look at the forward end of the torpedo tubes. You can't make out any torpedoes in this picture. That's actually not surprising, because Mogami fired four torpedoes from her port side tubes. Presumably, these tubes were used for that volley. In any event, that finishes the weaponry. For the hull pictures, I'll stick to the stern, since we're already in that area of the ship. First, we have the lower area, where the 25mm gun was mounted. The most notable thing here is the anchor chain. This is both stretched over the hull, and also inside the hull. Part of the chain is hanging down into the ruined seaplane deck, vanishing inside Mogami. Personally, I think the next image is more interesting. That being Mogami's port rudder. Or rather, what little we can see of it. Most of the rudder is buried in the mud, with various bits and pieces of debris scattered around it. All of that debris is too far gone to say with any certainty what it once was. Just pieces of the stern that fell away at some points after the cruiser sank. That debris is even more apparent when you look at the very end of the ship. Only the extreme stern of Mogami is recognizable as a ship. And even that is, maybe, a few feet of hull. Everything ahead of that is nothing more than a crumpled ruin of twisted steel. It should be noted, Japanese heavy cruisers have a tendency to see their stern collapse. At least on the wrecks we found so far. You can see this on Maya or Chokai as well. That said, Mogami's stern is by far the worst of the lot. Exactly why this is the case, I don't think we can say for certain. Part of it is certainly down to the general destruction of her seaplane deck. The rest of it might be due to implosion damage, coupled with the damage to her deck. It's impossible to say for sure. Although the underside of the ship is still mostly fine. The one picture we have of Mogami's starboard side comes from her starboard rudder and a bit of her inboard shaft. This is actually better looking than the port side, although again, it's buried pretty deeply into the mud. With no other pictures of the starboard side, however, I'll return to the port side. Here we have the remnants of her port catapult. Not much to make note of, but it's a picture of the wreck, so I'm sharing it. More interesting shots come from Mogami's bridge. This was, as I said at the start, shot to pieces by USS Portland. There are some intact sections, however, that are worth looking at. Here we have her main rangefinder at the very top of the bridge. This shows no sign of real damage other than the march of time. Even the rangefinder ears are still in place. The fire control on top of it is less pretty. Much of it has fallen away at some point. There aren't any obvious shell impacts, so those were probably thrown off during the sinking. A far rougher part of the bridge is the compass platform. This seems to have suffered a direct hit from Portland's 8-inch shells. The area is torn apart, with clear battle damage. 
something made even more obvious when you look closer in. I don't even want to imagine what happened to any men stationed here when the area was hit. The damage isn't quite so obvious at the base of her bridge. There aren't obvious shell holes in this area. What is there, however, is very rough. Debris litters her deck, and Mogami's bridge tower has lost much of its platforms. The base of a rangefinder platform is still intact, but that's about it. With little else to say, I'll round off the video here. Mogami is in... about as rough of shape as you'd expect. And yet, much of the ship is still identifiable. Considering the amount of damage it took to sink her, that's impressive, I think. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.